Welcome to the fifth section in this course on SwellKit for Beginners. In this section, we are going to learn about form actions. Before we understand what are form actions, let's recollect two SwellKit concepts we have seen earlier in this series. Server load functions and API routes. I've set up a new project called SK Form Actions to help recollect the two concepts. Let's start with server load functions. A server load function is used to load page data where the fetching logic involves a secret key such as an API key. To demo its usage, I have a folder called news within the routes folder. This has a page.server.js file where the assumption is that a server load function makes an API call to an external news API and returns an array of three news articles. Really simple. In page.swelt file, which is responsible for the UI, we access the page data using data.news and render the news article title. We also have an h1 tag that says today's headlines. If we head to the browser and navigate to slash news, we can see the news page data has been loaded and titles are being displayed. This is fantastic, but as the name indicates, the load function deals with only loading data. It would be great if SwellKit could allow us to declaratively specify functions that can handle data sent back to the server as well. By that, I'm talking about form data that a user would fill in the UI. Well, SwellKit does provide API routes as an option to handle form submissions. Which brings us to our second topic we have to recollect, API routes. With API routes, we can create a post API endpoint that can be called from a submit handler function in the page.swelt file. Once again, the code is already in place, so let me walk you through what I have. Within the routes folder, I've created another folder called auth. As you might have guessed, it's a component that contains a simple login form as HTML and a submit handler to submit the form data. Within the form tag, we have two inputs for username and password. We also have a button to submit the form data and a message at the top which indicates if the login was successful or not. The input values and the message are empty to begin with. On the form tag, we bind handle submit function to the submit event. We use prevent default to prevent page refresh when we submit the form. In the handle submit function, we start by resetting the message. We then make a post request to slash auth API endpoint. We pass in username and password as a request body. The API responds with a string, which we use to update the message in the UI. Straightforward login form and a submit handler. Now let's take a look at the server.js file within the same auth folder, which maps to slash auth API endpoint. The post handler gets access to request and cookies. From the request, we access the JSON payload, which in turn gives us access to the username and password. If the credentials are not provided, we respond with missing username or password and a status of 400. If they are provided, we set a cookie to indicate user is logged in and we respond with a message that says logged in. If we head to the browser and navigate to slash auth, we see the login form. Click submit and we see the error message, missing username or password. Fill in the details and click login. We see the message logged in. We also see the cookie being set. Nothing too difficult to understand, I hope. I want to quickly go back to our slide of universal load function versus server load function and point out that a server load function gets access to cookies, but a universal load function does not. 
But what I wanted to demonstrate is that we can handle form submissions using an API route. Now that we have a good recollection of the two topics, let's understand what happens in the absence of JavaScript in the browser. In DevTools, Command Shift P or Control Shift P and disable JavaScript. If you now navigate to slash news, we still see our data being loaded and the UI working as expected. This is because a server load function runs on the server. Disabling JavaScript doesn't affect it. Let's now clear the login cookie and navigate to slash auth. Fill in the details and log in. You can see no cookie is set. Our auth route does not work in the absence of JavaScript. Now you might ask, is that a problem? Well, if you've developed websites long enough, you would know it is. JavaScript should progressively enhance the user experience, but not be the cause for a website to not function as intended. This is especially true for a lot of government websites where you have to follow a strict guideline that functionality should not be affected by the absence of JavaScript. This is where form actions come into picture. In SwellKit, form actions allow you to post data to a server without having to rely on client-side JavaScript. You can define form actions in plus page.server.js file, which runs on the server. What is also great is that SwellKit makes it really easy to sprinkle in some of the nice UX improvements that you do get when JavaScript is enabled. All right, with this intro in mind, let's create our first form action in the next video.